Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how to solve the problem of being able to walk across water or other tiles which would normally have collision, but then sometimes you want to disable that collision, such as when a character is on a bridge and walking across it. So uh, I can demonstrate real quick. If I had take my player here and I walk to the edge of this cliff, you can see that very clearly we're blocked by the edge of the cliff and these water tiles. But if I go down and I enter this uh, bridge area, then I can just walk straight across the uh, bridge, even though there's water tiles underneath on the default ground or water layer. And at the same time, when uh, we're disabling the collision for those water tiles, you can see that the bridge itself also has its own collision, which is still blocking the player. Use so this is achieved using multiple physics layers for your tile set, and then also to have a custom data layer to toggle whether the player is standing on a bridge or any other tile which should elevate the player or not. So taking a look at the game level, the main thing we're concerned with initially is the tile map itself. So let's take a look at my tile map settings. So when you have a tile map and a tile set created, uh, there'll be multiple tabs down here that you can expand. So one which is really important to what we're doing is physics layers. So you can see that on this tile set, there are three physics layers set up which have collisions on different layers. So the ones I'm concerned with for this video are the first one, physics layer zero here, which has collisions on one and a mask on one. And then the third one here, physics layer two, which has collisions on eight and a mask on eight. So for collision layer one in my game, I'm calling that the ground layers. So these ground tiles would include the edge of the grass here and the water tiles, which should have collision normally blocking the player from just walking across the water. And then down here, I'm calling physics layer eight above ground. You can make it whichever layer you want that's convenient for your game. So the above ground tiles are things like the bridge, which sit above the ground. And when the player is on the bridge, it should still have a collision shape that the player can't walk through for certain areas. So for instance, the top and the bottom of the bridge, if the player walks above that, he will be blocked by a collision shape basically at the top of the top tiles and the bottom of the bottom tiles. Otherwise, uh, with having the water collision turned off and there being no collision on the bridge, then once the character's on the bridge, he'd be able to walk anywhere, which is also not what you want. So in order to have that switch between the player looking at collision layer one for collision and looking at an above ground layer, which for me, once again, is layer eight, you would need uh, some kind of custom data. So on a tile set, if I scroll down a little bit more, you can see that there's a section called custom data layers. So you can create things like booleans here, really almost any type of uh, regular value you can set up. And for each tile, you can define whether it has that property or not. So I'm calling mine elevate, which represents that when the character is standing on these tiles, it should elevate the player above the ground, disabling collision with uh, layer one. But because the player is now above the ground, it should enable collision with above ground tile. So just adding these fields in is not enough. So this would be the start of your setup for the layers. Next, you actually have to add them to the tiles in your tile set. So if you click on the tile set window at the bottom while you have the tile map selected in the scene, uh, then you can scroll down in the select panel and look for physics. So now if I select any of my tiles where I've set collisions, uh, you'll see that there is a box around the areas which the player would normally collide with. So as we can see, this is set up for physics layer zero. You can also set up separate collision shapes for any of the other physics layers if you want to. But you can see that physics layer two, my above ground collision does not have such a collision shape for the ground tiles, of course, because those are on the ground, they're not above the ground. So that's where we'd have our simple basic ground collisions. So now I need to go to the bridge tiles over here and we can select the tiles and we'd be able to see not in physics layer zero but down in physics layer two that i have collision shapes set up so these are just basically taking half the tile on the side which has um, basically empty space in the png the transparent areas because those represent where the water is underneath um, of course you can also see here that these tiles themselves do not have their own water tiles so we actually have two layers of tiles and by the way, if you're curious about how you do that on tile map, 
uh, you can just draw onto different layers. So this is the ground layer we're looking at, and then here is the top layer. So the top is just drawn on top of the ground, so we have two different sets of tiles in the same space. And how you add those layers in, down at the bottom of the tile map is this layers section, so you can just define as many layers as you want here, and which one is on top and which one's on bottom. Okay, so then lastly, for these tiles, like bridge tiles, which are going to elevate the player, I go down to the very bottom of the selection data, custom data, and we can see zero here, which means uh, layer zero of the custom data set. So for me, if I look at the tile set going up here, we of course know that custom data layers, zero refers to elevate here. So I need to take these tiles and I can click on um, the layer to see which ones have it and which ones don't. And we can just see that this is a Boolean value for each of the tile spaces. So all of these bridge tiles, I just have it checked for elevate, which means that if the player is standing on these tiles, then the player is going to be elevated above the ground. Uh, but of course, a simple Boolean is not enough to do that. We also need a script. So on my player game object, I have a height adjuster component script. So this is attached as a component, so you can basically reuse it in uh, any character in your game that needs to elevate itself based on walking onto bridges and that kind of thing. So if you want to download the script, I'll have it in the links below on Ko-Fi and Patreon as well. So let's go ahead and just take a look at a little bit of what's in here. So while the game's running, we need to check if the character should be elevated or not based on the tile map that the character is standing on. So in order to do that, you have to get reference to the tile map and you can use local to map on the character's current position in order to find out which tile the character's under. And that's represented as a XY vector position. And then with that tile position, you can get the cell tile data on a layer and the tile position. So on the tile map, there's multiple layers. You can see here that I'm doing ground, water, and top layer. Now only the top layer where these bridges are being put on actually is going to have the tile, the bridge tile, which is marked elevate is true. So in order for get cell tile data to work, you need to loop through all of the layers and do it for each one and then find one of the layers that is marked elevate. So if any of them are marked elevate, then we can return true because the character is supposed to be elevated while it's standing on any layer that has the elevated property marked true. Because when any of the layers under the player have the elevated property marked true, then the character is going to be elevated. So it only needs to match on one of those tiles. And then we want to set the mask and the collision layer, at the very least the collision. Mask is what the player is looking for. And then the collision layer is what physics layers the character is actually existing on. Um, but I'm doing mask and collision here for where the player is looking and where the player can collide with. So we want to set that for both the ground layer value and the heightened layer value. And basically, if we're on the heightened layer, if we're elevated, make above ground is true then the high layer is going to be set to active, which is the equivalent of just taking one of these collision layers and checking them on or off. It's a Boolean. And then uh, for the ground layer, we have that the opposite. So when make above ground is true, then we're not on the ground layer, and therefore we disable the ground layer collisions. And that's just what this little exclamation mark does. Okay, so then if we take a look at the inspector for this script, you need to assign the player character. So that would just be clicking here, assign. Uh, you need to set what your ground layer is. So I'm defaulting this to one and eight. Uh, you can change that in the script if you need to, or you can just use the defaults, one for your base ground and then eight for your above ground layer. And then you need to have a reference to the tile map. So you have a couple options here. You can either assign the tile map directly in the inspector, which requires uh, the tile map to actually be loaded in the current scene. So if you had a, a main game level scene and you had the level already loaded there, um, then you could just assign it in uh, the scene view, uh, just like you would with the character component over here. You just click here and assign one of the nodes over here. But if you're not doing that, uh, another option would be to use a signal bus. So I won't really explain the signal bus pattern too much here, but it's basically a global script which contains a bunch of signals that you can connect to and emit from other scripts. And this means you don't need to know about which script is actually emitting the level loaded signal. Uh, you just need to respond to it. And any other script that loads levels just calls emit signal. 
on uh, the signal bus global object. And that signal bus would be in project settings auto load here. So it's like a global variable um, that you can reference between your scripts so that your scripts that are in different scenes don't need to actually know about each other. They just need to know when a signal is emitted and when to respond to it. But that requires you to make a script called signal bus with the signal level loaded and then auto load that in the project settings. So you can do that pretty easily. Uh, this tutorial is on YouTube about how to do that. But I'm going to leave that commented out by default. So the simple way is just to assign the tile map uh, when you have the player and the tile map in the same level scene. If you put your player in here, then you could just assign the tile map just like you assign the character to the height adjuster component. So that's basically the gist of how you set this up. You have two physics layers on your uh, tile map and then one for above ground collisions. And you switch between which collision layers your player character or other characters in the game are looking to collide with. And therefore you can limit uh, where the player can walk based on if it's elevated above the ground or actually on the ground when it walks off of these elevated tiles. So once again, if you want the script, it'll be on Ko-Fi and Patreon. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end. I hope this gave you a good solution for how to handle the water bridge problem. And I will see all of you in my future video content.